Hey everyone, Part of the Greed here. This week I'm here to talk to you about gadgets. Gadgets are sometimes overlooked by new players, but they can be extremely valuable assets in competitive play, creating pressure and getting big knockouts. In this video we'll be covering the different types of gadgets along with how you can use them and what effects they have on your opponent. The bomb is the most straightforward gadget. You throw it, if it hits your opponent, it explodes. Bombs will bounce off of soft and hard platforms. They follow all your general rules of physics and are a great way to get a quick kill on your opponent. You should know that bombs can only be thrown in the 8 cardinal directions and intermediate directions, as is true with all gadgets even if you use an analog stick. The damage done by a bomb is dependent on the difference between the attack stat of the person throwing the bomb and the defense stat of the person getting hit by it. When both players have the same attack and defense, a bomb will do 30 damage, otherwise you can roughly follow this formula. One thing you may not know about bombs is that they can be caught. To catch a bomb, simply use the button you use to pick up the bomb. By default, this is X on the Xbox controller and V on the keyboard. Catching a bomb can be a great way to throw your opponent off and surprise them with a taste of their own medicine. You can also use your momentum to influence the arc of the bomb. Here I throw the bomb straight up, but because I'm moving forward, the bomb is able to go off the side of the ledge giving me a great way to edge guard and an angle I couldn't have thrown the bomb without first jumping up to line my shot. Lastly, bombs also defuse after a point if they do not make contact with anyone. After bouncing a bit, once a bomb has lost its speed and is close to the ground, it will return to being a normal pickup that won't explode on contact. Mines are the other explosive gadget in the game. Like bombs, mines explode on contact, but instead of bouncing, they stick to the first non-player surface they touch. Mines can be a fantastic way of creating map control. By putting down a mine, many times you can force your opponent into waiting, letting you get prepared, else they risk getting close to the mine. A popular move after placing a mine is to kick your players into it with a sidelight after becoming unarmed, or with other weapons if you have them. Be sure to look out for opportunities to do this, and likewise watch out that your opponent doesn't push you into a mine. Mines don't stick around forever though. After putting down a mine, it will explode after 8 seconds. This explosion does have a hitbox, so even if you don't step directly onto the mine, if you're close to it, when it goes off, it can easily kill you. Like bombs, mines adhere to many of the same projectile rules. They can be caught, can only be thrown in 8 directions, and they can carry your momentum until they are thrown. Finally, you can also throw your gadgets into mines. Throwing weapons or spike balls into mines will explode the mine and propel the weapon or spike ball, giving them much more force on impact. Throwing a bomb, on the other hand, will explode the mine and destroy both gadgets. You can use this if you need to quickly get rid of a mine on the field. The spike ball can be one of the most powerful gadgets at your disposal. It is very similar to the bomb with two key differences. Its damage is dependent on a different set of factors and you can continue to use it after successive hits. The damage done by a spike ball increases when you charge it for longer and decreases the longer the ball stays in the air. The fact that you can pick up the spike ball after hitting it can lead to the spike ball being used for some long throw chains that can rack up tons of damage. One community member, Crocky, made this famous back in June, so much so that the gadget is commonly referred to in the community as the Crocky Ball. The Valkyrie Horn summons your sidekick to come swooping in to deliver a weapon right at your feet. On its way to you, your sidekick can hit your opponent, with the damage also being dependent on defense and attack stats of the players, doing exactly half the damage a bomb would do. Valkyrie Horns even have the chance of knocking your opponent off the top of the map. You can also throw the Valkyrie Horn at your opponent. However, because this does exactly zero damage and very little force, I wouldn't really recommend using it unless you're looking for a quick interrupt. Knocking someone out with a Valkyrie Horn throw is very, very unlikely. Now while weapons are hardly gadgets in the traditional sense as far as this list goes, I wanted to point out some of the uses of weapons as gadgets. Weapons like everything else in Brawlhalla can be thrown, however they're unique in that throwing is only one of the many different things you can do with a weapon at any given time. When you hold a minor crocky ball or bomb, your opponent knows that the only thing you can do is throw it, so they are likely to focus on dodging it. Contrast this to weapon throws, where, as long as you haven't been doing nothing but weapon throwing the entire game, your opponent is unlikely to expect it as you interrupt their signature. Weapon throws are also fantastic and used as combo starters, as they deal a substantial amount of stun time. With all this in mind, don't be afraid to throw your weapon at your opponent. You can always pick it back up afterwards, and even if you miss, unarmed combat is a perfectly viable follow-up. Overall, remember that gadgets are your friends. While you may be tempted to cling to the familiarity of your weapons, throwing some gadgets into your play can be enough to daze your opponent to get you the upper hand. Have fun, and good luck. 
If this guide helped you, I'd really appreciate it if you gave me a quick thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to catch more Brawlhalla guides coming out every other week. Thanks for watching.